Right guys, Mike Crossfield here in my hands today. Tightlist AP2 716 hitting up against the Callaway Apex irons. Let's give these two irons a hit, see what they might do for your golf game. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, Tightlist AP2 716 hitting up against the Callaway Apex uh, CF. 16 cut face design 2016 iron um, so you're getting a cut face design which is going to keep ball speeds across the face relatively even Callaway are saying plenty of weight down in the heel and toe nice cavity backed iron um, it's a forged club as well I've got full details on this club on a full review on my uh, site already on the channel so go and check that one out if you want a little bit more in-depth detail on this club this is more of a mix up between the two so I'm just going to show you how they perform AP2 is forged also also got tungsten kind of really down out in the heel and the toe to try and get, again give it that kind of stability and keep the ball speeds across the face. Both of these clubs are really aimed at golfers who want help but also want the club to look a certain way because when I put the club down by the ball on these two you've got two pretty good lookers here. If anything the Titleist wins it on slenderness. You've got to remember in Apex as an Apex Pro which will also kind of compare with AP2 as well as a mix up between which of the two I chose to compare to AP2 but we'll um, talk about that a bit more as we go on. Now we've got some real ball data with my Titleist Pro V1X balls and GC2 HMT and I've also got Steve Buzzer hitting a few shots for me as well um, and giving us his data on the two clubs which is quite interesting which you'll see at the end of the video so let's start hitting them shall we should we start apex cup face cf 16 iron to start us off it's a lovely little squat blade length so it's very very pretty down by the ball medium top line not as thin as the ap2 plenty of help in this club for a forge club while still looking very kind of tall proven in its shape you know really kind of players looking which i think will appeal to a lot of golfers off face it makes quite a loud noise it's not the kind of softest feeling club out there by a long way because this club is chasing a few yards um, it's quite strong in its lofts and you'll see how that affects me and steve in our data in a second it's quite interesting uh, Callaway are going to say it's strong in the lofts because obviously where all the weight is packed the launches it gives and the peak heights don't change so if they don't make it strong in the loss it's going to go too high and then you'll lose distance is the idea but then you do sacrifice the spin model a bit with these clubs which i've talked about a lot in other videos let's give it another hit next to no offset i mean there is offset down there but it's very little amount to be honest with you the apex cf cup face uh, 16 um, is a club I could game so easily. It looks fantastic. It feels nice. I quite like its clippy sound. Um, and we'll show you the data soon as well to show you why I like that club. Definitely one for people who want as much help as possible while still looking pretty funky cool. So AP2, this is a classic looking club. Slightly longer in its blade length. Certainly thinner on its top line. Plenty of tungsten down in the heel and toe, more than in 714 models, they're saying 716, I think it's like, don't quote me on this, it might be 50% more tungsten to try and increase MOI, so MOI is that resistance to twist as you off-centre hit the club, to try and keep those ball speeds up. Next to no offset, just a tiny bit down by the ball, and with both of these clubs they're kind of geared up for launches as you go into the different lofts, so you get a bit more help as you go into the lower irons. So like the long irons through to the more lofted ones. Off the face, AP2. Feels very nice. To be honest with you, it feels very similar. I think if you blindfold tested me on these two, I would struggle to tell the difference in sound stroke feel. They feel very, very similar. So even though they're forged, they still do come off the face of that sound of uh you know a bit of power a bit of a whack saying that that shot struck a little bit better there ap2 maybe sounded a little softer so it didn't feel just sounded and then that made me think oh is that a bit softer because it had that slightly duller sound i'm gonna give one more hit with ap2 both of these clubs i could absolutely gain i just think apex is being a little bit more brash in its distance with its uh lofting and where the cgs are and stuff a little bit more traditional in the tightlist and what tightlists don't want to lose on is that land angle stroke spin rate because they want the ball stopping the other end you gotta remember ap2 is being used by lots of tall players 
apex over apex pro i reckon less out of their range you know this club has still got a kind of hierarchy of players who still need it to perform a certain way the other end they don't want it just going through the air like a rocket both of those two clubs feel pretty damn good to be honest let's look at the numbers and let's see how steve's numbers changed as we hit the two irons Right, we're going to look at Steve Buzz's numbers to start. So he hit three shots of each. AP2 to start us off, hitting at 180 yard carry. Now this is a six iron AP2, spinning at 6,000 revs, launching at 20 degrees. Interestingly, so the seven iron for Steve in the apex, so it's a seven iron over the six, he was carrying that 187. So he was carrying his, the seven iron apex seven yards further than the AP2. You can see the strike was kind of consistently less on the apex apart from one slight mishit with the AP2. Um, so he's gonna sacrifice maybe a bit of spin the other end, but then his land angle or his peak height, 50 yards with the seven iron on the apex, the 42, with the six iron on the uh, AP2. So the apex there really going like a rocket. And as he hit them, he felt that. Let's show you what his uh, thoughts were on the two clubs. Right, Steve, you hit the tight list and the apex Callaway. AP1, uh, sorry, AP2, AP2 tight two. list and the apex. Thoughts, please. Uh, the tight list, I really like that they've updated the product and it actually looks different. Okay. Um, I think the uh, it, looking down on it, it looks really, really good. I wasn't so keen on the feel. Might have been just the shots that I hit, but it wasn't quite as happy with the feel compared to this one. Although this one is a rocket, so I don't think this club would work for me in my bag. It would be far too powerful. But we were like comparing a seven iron to a six iron and really powerful. I'd have to use a different one in the range, but like the feel, like the power. Yeah, absolutely. And the looks of the two lanes, you're an apex a bit more and feel apex, but you would have to go more for the Apex Pro if you were to put that there. Cer certainly. It was going. It was like too powerful and yeah. it was interesting, wasn't it? We were hitting it quite high, but mm. it was taking the spin off. I would I would just be hitting this one too far. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. So interesting numbers there from Steve. He's launching it higher, getting it higher with similar spins on the two clubs and that was making that one go, like you say, just crazy, crazy distances to the extent where he almost felt like he couldn't control it. If we check out my numbers, so I hit the apex first, I was going seven iron 163, so the stronger end of my seven iron distance that, but pretty much where I'd want my seven iron to go, because I'm not afraid of some stronger lofts. Um, and then I was getting the AP2 going 168, so that little bit further, you gotta remember that's a six iron over a seven iron. And then I also saw very similar spins, very similar peak height, so they're kind of, doing exactly what those lofts on those clubs should do for me. It was Steve who was flipping them around a little bit, interesting, as he put that bit more speeding. For me, out of those two on those numbers, the Apex is gonna be very appealing to me. Spin may be a fraction low, but I like that added distance as someone who puts less speed in it than Steve, where actually the AP2 um, for me was really good. It does exactly what I wanted it to, it to do. Maybe I don't do quite enough, which is why I might be, if I was going tightly range, I'd be kind of verging on AP1 to keep up anywhere with Apex, really. So you see what I mean? So these clubs all do, do what they're meant to do in the right hands. It's not about um, kind of what, if they, you know, what people say, oh, these clubs are built to tolerance, which I say in lots of videos, so they're all gonna do the same. Well, they do all do the same in certain hands, which is why it's so important that you go out and test them. Watching my test is good, and it hopefully gives you a bit of an overview of the club, but for me, I'm gonna be picking on what I want my iron to do, the same way Steve was. He wasn't picking on the longest. He didn't want it to go that long. He wanted it to go the distance he wants an iron to go. Where me being a slightly weaker player, so not as powerful, I don't mind the fact that the apex is kind of cranking up a little bit. That plays into my launches. Really interesting numbers. Out of the two, if I had to pick, I think I would just pick Apex, but purely because I'm being seduced by those stronger lofts a little bit. But I, I would have to monitor that spin rate coming into a green. I think if I had to use Titus AP2, I wouldn't lose much sleep. I can pretend to be Jordan Spieth as much as the next person. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more videos. Find me on Instagram at CrossfieldMark. Also on Twitter at 4GolfOnline. Find me on Facebook, Mark Crossfield. Thanks for watching. Post comments as always and see you soon.